Hi guys, today I'm here with my classics I want to read in 2019 video, which is always one of my favourite videos that I film every single year. I constantly revisit it throughout the year and I also love watching previous year's videos because I think they're a real testament to how much work I've put into reading classics and how that work has meant that I feel much more comfortable reading classics and I'm really confident in my reading now. So I'm going to be talking you through the classics classics I want to read this year with you and I've chosen quite a few books in lots of different genres and styles and from different eras that I think I'm going to want to read this year. As always I must disclaim that this isn't a definitive list of the classics I want to read this year. I want to read lots more poetry and there are a few series I want to finish too but these are the books that I am most excited to read right now and the best way to see if I've read them is to watch my reading wrap-ups throughout the year because that's where I'll be talking about these books. Going back to what I said about confidence, the first books I want to show you in this TBR are some books that I'm going to challenge myself to read this year. Something I don't want to do is constantly stick to my comfort zone, which is definitely Victorian fiction. So what I would like to do is choose a few books at the start of the year that I definitely want to read this year that really do terrify me. The books I'm going to show you are ones that have been stuck on my TBR for quite a while now. I've been staring at them thinking I don't really want to read these because I'm not sure if I can. I'm going to feel unconfident when I read them but what I want to show is that it's okay to feel that way. So I've chosen three and I'm going to try and read one every three months but I haven't chosen a fourth because I'd like to give myself some room if I want to add something or give myself a bit more time. So these are the first three books and the first is the one that terrifies me the most because it is Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. I don't know lots and lots about this plot but one of the things that I want to do this year is read more Russian literature. This is considered one of the greatest books ever written and so I can't not read it but the size is what scares me. But I've been thinking about it more and more and as I've looked deeper into Anna Karenina, it is a book told in eight parts. So I think how I'm going to approach it is to read it in the eight parts to make it seem like much smaller books in one. So I'm not constantly looking at the size and thinking, oh my gosh, I've got so much more left to read. But also in giving myself three months to read it, I'm ensuring that I do give myself enough time and don't feel feel under pressure to read it within a week or something like that. So I don't want to talk too much about the plot of Anna Karenina because I don't know a lot about it but I know that it's a book that I do really want to read and lots of you have been telling me that I need to read it. So 2019 is going to be my year. Another one of the books that really intimidates me is by an author I've actually already read a book from and it's because of this that I'm so intimidated by it and it is The Bride of Lamb more by Sir Walter Scott. I read Waverley at the end of 2017 and whilst I really enjoyed it, I found it very dense, I found it very heavy going, I found his language was quite confusing and I found it took me a long time because I had to constantly refer to the notes in the back of the book and that's why this does intimidate me because that's not an easy reading experience for me. I think being part of the booktube community, you want to read books quickly, you want to read a large quantity of books and books like this don't lend that kind of reading experience but I really want to try and shake off that mindset this year and that's why I really want to make sure that I do read books like this that I do have to take more time on. I have to concentrate more on them because I do really enjoy them. I enjoy books like these because I can see why people loved them so much when they were first published rather than why I can see people love them so much now which I don't think that they really do. The Bride of Lammermoor is about a man called Edgar who is the master of Ravenswood and his relationship with Lucy whose father ended the Ravenswood's family claim on their ancestral home. It's about vengeance and families and I think there's going to be quite a few links to a certain book called Wuthering Heights because Emily Bronte was a fan of Sir Walter Scott and really that's why I'm so interested in reading his books and I can really 
really see the links between the two and also the links between her poetry. So that's why I'm loving his books so much. And then the final book I've chosen because I think it's really going to challenge me is The Mysteries of Udolpho by Anne Radcliffe. Like I said at the start of this video, my comfort zone is definitely Victorian classics and Victorian realism really. It's why I love Thomas Hardy so much because his books are so realistic. Whereas The Mysteries of Udolpho is a gothic novel and I want to read it because it's one of the novels that Jane Austen mentions in Northanger Abbey which is probably my favourite book by her because in Northanger Abbey the heroine Catherine has read so many gothic novels that she thinks she is in a gothic novel and I read The Castle of Otranto a few months ago and I really liked it but for all the wrong reasons. I found it humorous whereas it was supposed to be quite scary and chilling but I have hopes that The Mysteries of Udolpho is going to deliver everything that the castle of Otranto couldn't because it has a similar setting of a medieval castle in Europe and I am really interested in reading more books like this. Next up I have a pile of classics I'd like to read by authors I have already read. Lots of these I read for the first time in 2018 and really loved their books and would love to continue more of them this year. As some of them I've read in previous years and would like to read more from them now. So the first one is The Last Man by Mary Shelley who of course wrote Frankenstein. I read Frankenstein a few years ago now and I really liked it. I wouldn't say it's one of my favourite books, I don't have the personal connection to it but I think it's one of the most fascinating books to study and look at in great detail because it raises so many questions. But The Last Man isn't a book that I've heard about a lot and so I'd like to read it because it is an apocalyptic novel about the end of human civilization. So it has the kind of scientific themes that Frankenstein has, but it is very underrated and so I'd love to find out more about Mary Shelley through this. She's an author I really like. I find her life really fascinating and I did really like Frankenstein, but I'd like to read more from her so I can delve deeper into who she was as a person and really see if I can build that personal connection up. In 2018, I read three Daphne du Maurier novels and I fell in love with her writing. I read Rebecca and Jamaica Inn, which I loved and then I also read The House on the Strand which I really didn't like. So I'm going to give Daphne du Maurier another go this year and one of the books I'm really excited to read is My Cousin Rachel. This is a really gorgeous edition by Virago. My Cousin Rachel is about a man called Philip who is brought up by his cousin Ambrose and Ambrose is a bachelor, Philip is his heir but one day Philip goes to Florence and he marries a woman called Rachel. He's never had any inclination that he would want to get married before, but then he suddenly gets married and then very suddenly dies. And Philip then meets Rachel when she comes over to England and she's this very mysterious figure, but did she murder Ambrose? That is the premise of the book. And I think it sounds brilliant. It has all the intrigue I love about Daphne de Maurier's writing and I have no doubt this is going to be a stunner. Also for the first time in 2018 I read Charles Dickens, I read Great Expectations, I read A Christmas Carol and I tried to read Hard Times but I had a very hard time with it and I still haven't finished it so that's one thing I would like to do but I'm not in any rush because I'm just not enjoying it at all. So I'd like to read another Charles Dickens this year and I would like to read A Tale of Two Cities which is set in London and Paris and it talks about the time during the French Revolution and it's about an exiled Parisian man and a London lawyer and they fall in love with the same woman. Charles Dickens called this the best novel he'd ever written which really intrigues me and I can't wait to read it for that reason. Instead of a novel this time we have a collection of plays. This is The Importance of Being Earnest and Other Plays by Oscar Wilde. I've already read The Picture of Dorian Gray 
Grey, which I love. I think it's an absolute masterpiece. And so I'd love to read some of Oscar Wilde's plays this year. I think that he's hilarious. I love lots of his aphorisms. I love the way he writes his characters. They feel very much caricatures of themselves. And I have a feeling that I'm going to love quite a few of these. I don't know lots about them. I've heard bits and pieces, but I'll definitely feed back on this once I have read some of them. A book in a new favourite series of mine is The Sign of Four by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I read A Study in Scarlet in 2018 and I fell in love with Sherlock Holmes and Dr Watson. I thought the way that he spun the plot was incredible, I couldn't see what was happening and I loved the structure of it too. So I'm really looking forward to reading the next one which is The Sign of Four. I'm hopefully going to read quite a few of these this year because I find them very easy to read. I think they've got a very understandable tone to them, very accessible and yet you get so much out of them. I'm going to read this one and then I've also got The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes to read which is a collection of short stories and I'm trying to read these in publication order. And then the final book by an author I've already read is Howard's End by E.M. Forster. I read A Room with a View by him in the summer of 2018 and I had very high hopes for it but I didn't think that they were quite met. I liked it, I really liked elements of it but the whole book didn't quite fit together for me. One of the things I really liked about it though was the way that Ian Forster comments on the society, how he talks about the people living in Edwardian society, how he talks about the changes that are happening and the relationships between people. He almost calls out the hypocrisy of the people and the way in which they fit together and I think that's really interesting and I'm looking forward to seeing how he explores similar things in Howard's End. Another pile to get through now and these are miscellaneous books of authors I've wanted to read for ages that have been sitting on my TBR that I really do think I need to read and I'm really excited for so many of these. I think these are going to be ones that I read quite soon and the first one I have to share with you is Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. This was published in the 1930s and it's a book I've wanted to read for ages and I think it's going to be my first classic of the year. It's about an orphan called Stella who is 19 years old when she is orphaned. Her parents die of Spanish influenza and she goes to her relative's farm in deepest darkest Sussex where she meets her very eccentric family. It is a very humorous book and I think is going to be really interesting to read because I haven't quite read anything like this before but I love stories like this and I'm going to be feeding back on it very soon because I think I'm going to start it pretty much as soon as I stop filming this video. Next up we have The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy by Lawrence Stern. This is a book I've heard a lot about and it's one that I really want to read because I do want to read a more 18th century literature. I read so much 19th century literature that I do need to give the 18th century a chance and I am intrigued by this because it opens up with Tristram talking about his moment of conception. Yes, this is a book where the conception of the main character is described in detail and I'm fascinated by this because you don't get the same thing in Victorian fiction and one of the things I love about reading 18th century fiction is that you get to compare it to the 19th century which was very moral and was very much about keeping society safe whereas in the 18th century you have this very bawdy humour, lots of loose fiction where you're not really worried about the morals and I really like that about it which is why I want to read more this year. I'm going to read this and then I'm also going to read the likes of The Mysteries of Udolpho which is gothic fiction and I think with the books that I do read I'm really going to build up my knowledge of the 18th century. Then we have The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells and I want to read this because the BBC have adapted it and the adaptation airs in the first half of 2019 and it stars Eleanor Tomlinson who plays Demelza in Poldark which I really love. I'm a big Poldark fan so I want to read the book before I watch it and I'm being quite adventurous with my genres this year. Like I said, I read a lot of realism and I read bits and pieces of gothic literature, but I don't read much science fiction and particularly science fiction classics. So I can't wait to see how I get on with books like this. I want to read lots and lots of poetry in 2019 because it's something I really enjoyed last year. I found so many poets that were new to me that I didn't think I would like, but then I really enjoyed. And one of the poets I discovered in 2018 
2018 was Wilfred Owen, who I'd wanted to read for a while, but I wasn't really sure if I liked war poetry. I thought it just wasn't for me. But once I'd read some of his poetry, I discovered that I really loved it. So one of the books that I'd love to read is The Penguin Book of First World War Poetry. This seems like a really great addition. I'd really love to read more Sea Creeds as soon. But one of the things I like about this edition of First World War Poetry and this selection is that it includes lots of women poets too, which I think is really important. I don't want to just read about the First World War from the perspective of men. I also want to see what it was like back home for the women and get a very balanced picture of the war through the poems included. But I really like reading about it. I think it's very difficult. I think emotionally it can be quite draining to read poets like these. But I think it is vitally important that we still read about the war and read about the war from the perspective of people who were actually there. And so this is something that I think will be difficult to dive into, but it's something that I really do want to read. And I think once I've read it, I will really remember and cherish lots of the poems. And then the final one from this pile is a book that Persephone Books published last year and it is Despised and Rejected by Rose Alatini. This was a book that was banned in its lifetime. It was seen as a very bad book, not because it features same-sex relationships, but because of the way it talks about the war and encourages people not to support the war. And this was seen as very criminal because, of course, the government wanted people to be in support of the war so that they would fight. And pacifism was definitely not something that should be supported. But that's not really the main reason I want to read it, although I think it will be really interesting to read about and to look more into. I want to read it because this year I really do want to make my video on same-sex relationships in classics because there have been quite a few that I have discovered as I've been reading and quite a few that I want to read this year that I haven't featured on this TBR. It's something that I think is really interesting from a historical perspective and something that I think we see ourselves now as being very progressive but we may be progressive but lots of these authors paved the way for that progression and that is something that I really want to look more into. So despite and rejected I'm sure is a book that I will really enjoy. I feel like I've been talking for a very long time and this TBR does seem very ambitious but we're finally at the last stages of it and these are some of the translated classics that I would like to read this year. First up we have Effie Briest by Theodore Fontaine who was a German author. This was actually recommended to me in my classics I want to read in 2018 video where I encourage you in the comments to leave very recommendations for classics you think I should read. I particularly love hearing about classics from your own countries and this was one of the recommendations that was given to me and it is about a young girl who marries a man who is much older than her and from the things I've read about it it really does remind me so far of Two on a Tower by Thomas Hardy and I'm really interested in seeing how different relationships are perceived throughout the centuries as we read them. Theodore Fontaine also sounds like a very interesting character character because he published the first of his 16 novels when he was nearly 60 and I'd be really interested to find out more about his path to publication after I have read the book. Next up we have Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert and I don't want to talk lots about the plot of this instead I'm going to read to you from the preface to this Penguin Cloth Band Classics edition because I thought it was very interesting and it says Madame Bovary is utterly modern. It's the first sex and shopping novel after after all, Emma Bovary, desperately seeking satisfaction and fulfilment, employs retail therapy as an escape from an unhappy marriage, experiments with adultery, is obsessed with money and with material objects as substitutes for happiness. And I love female characters who don't pretend to be something they're not. They are unlikable and you're not really sure throughout the book if you should be rooting for them or not. But I think this is also a tragedy. So I think there's gonna be lots of interesting aspects to this book and it's one I've wanted to read for ages. So 2019 is hopefully going to be the year. And then finally, for the final classic I would like to read in 2019, we have another book that one of you recommended to me. And 
and as soon as I heard you describe it I knew that it was a book that I had to read because it is The Tunnel by Ernesto Sabato. I don't know if I'm saying that right, I always try and pronounce the author names to the best of my ability but my language skills aren't always the best although I do try. This is about an artist called Juan Pablo Castell who is in prison for murdering a woman who he became obsessed with and the book is told through him writing to the woman he has murdered and who he was obsessed with and that really fascinated me. Another thing I would like to explore this year is looking at fascination and the way that we view women in fiction and how we view these women through the perspective of men who became obsessed with them because I think there are lots of books which tie into that idea and I think it's something that always quite repulses me and yet something that it's almost like you're watching a car crash you just can't look away it's something that really does make you think and maybe not for all the right reasons because it feels very wrong and yet the way that the author makes you feel about the characters is always something that I find very very skillful because it takes a lot of talent to make you feel certain things about certain characters and every author portrays certain characters in different lights and so I think the end result is always really interesting too. I'm not sure if it's a book I'm going to love but I think one of the best things about discovering classics and discovering new authors for me is going into something not knowing what to expect. So those are the books that I am hoping to read in 2019. I feel like it is very ambitious and I don't think I'm going to read all of these but these are the ones that at the start of the year I am really hoping to read and I think I'm going to enjoy so many of these and I'm so proud of myself too because a few years ago I was so unconfident when reading classics. I hadn't read very many and I was very unsure of myself when reading them but through reading more and more of them I've really built my confidence and I feel like now I can tackle books that have always really scared me and that's something that I really want to consider this year and it's something that maybe you might want to consider too. Try and read at least one book this year that really does scare you because I think that you might be pleasantly surprised. So in the comments below I would love to know what classics you are planning to read this year, whether you've read any of the ones on my list and you really enjoyed them or I would also love to know some of the classics that you think I should read if I do read all of these and then want to read something else because last year one of my favourite things was getting to know lots more of you through the recommendations you gave. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. Happy reading!